<laughs> Hello, today my friend Alison has, uh, has come over for um, a cuppa and we've had ginger cake, all the essential things um, and we're going to, we're just going to have a bit of a chat really. You might remember uh, a couple of weeks ago I ran a giveaway for a calendar that had cartoon animals on it and that was by uh, Alison Ningley. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, Alison's come over today uh, for a natter and um, to show me some other bits and pieces that she's uh, she's been working on. Yes, it's very kind of you to do this, and I'm really happy to show you this new collection, which is really, really exciting as a massive fan of James Harriet's books as a child. The Vet? The Vet, yes. Oh, awesome. I got a message earlier last year that we had the everyday range of cards in the Harriet Museum in Thursk. And and that's, possi- in that's in Yorkshire. Yorkshire, that's right. in Yorkshire. And there was a possibility that we might be able to design a range of cards with the Harriet name. Oh, at which point amazing. I was stopped oh, amazing. So we had a lot of visits up and down to Thirsk. And I'm from Derbyshire, so nearly my neck of the woods, but yeah. not quite. Um, they're lovely, lovely people up there. And at the end of the year, October, I've brought together a range of 12 different designs with the blessing of his son and daughter who were. I was so thrilled to meet as well. They're lovely oh, people. Oh, nice. And all animal lovers, obviously. Mm. And um, and this is the result. So we have a range of 12 designs, which are on individual cards. And <laughs> I'll uh, do some close-ups close of these yes, so that okay. people can, can um, see the close-ups. Yes. Note card packs and coasters. Oh, no. These are fantastic. They're really... Nicely produced. Oh, they're nice publisher. quality, aren't they? Yes. Okay, yeah. this isn't a sales pitch, this is actually... <laughs> these are nice quality. We've done them in a textured card which mimics the watercolour paper that I use to do the originals yeah, on. Yeah, that's so exactly really nice like, yeah. finish. And they, obviously they're all countryside related and vet related, but um, just general humour. But also with a nod towards that era of the 40s which was I think, sort of the height of his work and and what people associated particularly with the television series which was also massively popular yeah do you remember uh well the, the older the the less mature won't remember this but those of who have had some some glow of maturity uh will probably remember the um television series was it all all, all creatures, creatures great, great and small all creatures great and small yeah, yeah. With beautiful yorkshire scenery and the late robert hardy and um, yeah, it was a fantastic series. I think my parents still watch it most days because it's on the digital channel. Oh, fantastic! And of course, the famous opening with the piano music and the and the splashback, which oh. is on one of the cards. Oh, <coughs> oh yes. yes, where the car famously goes through the back uh, and forward. I'm sure and in you fact, the that. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, that was a suggestion by the the manageress of the shop in the museum, who suggested that I tried to do a joke with that because it's such an iconic um, image yeah. and the obvious thing is somebody getting splashed and the oh. sheep laughing at him. But and so that you were saying that the museum's actually at... The museum is, is a fantastic place to visit. The main part of the museum is actually the old surgery. The where, veterinary where, surgery? The veterinary surgery where oh. he practiced. And of course afterwards where he lived and where his son and daughter lived when they were very little. So that's all left in place, so you can walk through the original surgery and the kitchen and oh, the, the amazing. rooms. amazing. Absolutely fantastic. And for fans of the television series, you go through a room at the back, and the BBC donated the set. So you walk oh. onto the set, and you can touch the telephone, and, and, and the music plays, and it's just... Oh, fantastic. And then upstairs, there's an interactive um, music bits for kids with um, animals and, um, and veterinary old veterinary instruments which are quite terrifying <laughs> and then you walk out and you come into a modern bit next door which is which is the shop which, which is where all these cards will be oh. so along with them um, what's this the goodies. that was an idea that was um again a suggestion by the manageress was to have a little note card because they get a lot of school visits oh. particularly with the um, popularity of the yorkshire vet series oh i love this so she wanted a, a little notepad that was pocket money price so i just a so little terrier it. chewing things up which i've got a jack russell and i'm familiar with that I love it. So, <clears throat> so here are all the goodies. I wanted to ask you because you were saying about the the watercolour paper. Yeah. 
how long does it take to do a picture? And I know that's how long a piece of string, but... I would say an average, fairly detailed one I can normally do in a, in a day. But after I tend, after you've had the idea. After, <laughs> the idea is the trouble. The yeah. idea is that it takes ages. Um, and that's a lot of the time spending the idea is just sitting, staring at a blank piece of paper. And it <laughs> looks a lot like doing nothing. <laughs> or giving up and going out and walking the dogs. <laughs> but when I get to the idea and the sketch bit, and then I, I draw it out, I map it out in ink, and then yeah. I paint it in watercolour. And that takes about a day. But normally I try and have several on the go at once. So that I'm not overworking, I'm not putting my hand on wet paint. Ah, oh, okay. So with these, I tend to do three or four at a time. So if you've got a colour wash, you can do it, uh, do three of them all at mm. once. So that, that's how I generally work. And obviously that a little design like that is fairly quick. But the backgrounds, they, they take the time. Yeah. But I'm very traditional. I just work in pen and ink and watercolour and I'm hopeless with a computer. So if I get a bit wrong, I have to count to very high numbers, tear it up and start all over again. Wow, so it's probably all lot. hands yes. done. See, it becomes a completely different thing if it's not just being done on a computer. Yes. Yeah, I, I tried when occasionally to do a little bit of tweaking the image, but to be honest, it takes me so long to learn how to do it, and it's so frustrating that it's a lot quicker if yeah. I just rip it up and start okay. again. Uh, I always really admire anybody who can do... Uh, drawing or painting because um, because my artwork uh, is stick men uh, and even then you can't tell what gender they are <laughs> uh, I really I mean my 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 drawing ability is zero I mean I do loads of other creative things but I can't do pen and paper or paint or anything I just can't do it it's just not it's not Hand-eye coordination is about as good as, you know, brain-mouth coordination most days. That's funny. <laughs> I've always drawn. I can't sew. If you give me buttons come off, that's it. I'm, I'm lost. But I've always drawn, ever since I could pick up a pencil. I know mm. it sounds like a cliche, but I've got little drawings that mum saved. Embarrassing. But I've always drawn. I've always drawn animals. And oddly, I've always drawn cartoon stories. I remember drawing obsessively on anything, boxes, the wall. <laughs> And drawing no, good. <laughs> little, um, my mum didn't say that. Drawing little sequences of cartoons, and then I'd go on. I'd draw friends and neighbours' cartoon dogs' pocket money, um, and that sort of branched out. But I didn't want to do it as a living because I'd read the James Herriot books. Like millions of other people, I wanted to be a vet, but I wasn't quite smart enough at the, <laughs> all the sciences. So, but I worked in stables and I worked in kennels. Uh, but I still resisted. I didn't want to do this as a living, but it caught up with me and. And now I've come full circle. It's chosen you. <laughs> it's chosen me, and in a strange roundabout way, I came back to the Harriet that inspired me in the first place, but from a direction I would never ever have imagined. But it's just fantastic. But no, I always wanted to do the hands on. But working hands on actually was the best training I could have had, far better than art college, was getting out and working in kennels and stables. Yeah. And, uh, and now with lots of chickens, which. Yeah. Also, they form a lot of my drawings. <laughs> so I met Alison. Um, here's a, here's one of those fortuitous things. And I, I met Alison because she had advertised a chicken house for sale, uh, and I said, "Oh, oh, oh, yes, please." <laughs> but we had no way of getting it because it was really very big. And so uh, Alison and her husband uh, very kindly bought the, the chicken house down to us, and it was just. And we just hit it off. Yes. We just got yeah. on really well. Yeah. Um, and then not too long after that, uh, we had some chickens from you, which are yes. still out there laying, <laughs> laying like mad. <laughs> they didn't lay for me. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of them. A couple of them haven't laid for a while, but no, we've got a couple of two that I just chug one out every day. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, so yeah. that was absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, it was just one of those things where you suddenly meet someone and, and you get on really well. Yeah, so. like-minded people, although you do the small holding much better than me. I've oh, got ponies. That, ponies are just a way to throw them. I justify them in saying that they they inform my work. Absolutely. And have you got alpacas as <laughs> well? I've got four alpacas. They were there as, as chicken guards, which they actually do very well. But if I'm honest, they're big pets. <laughs> <laughs> the big woolly pet, the big muddy woolly pets at the moment. 
And I've still got eight chickens, which is enough because obviously I just found I hadn't really got the time uh, as yet to do all this. Yeah. I'll be looking after all the animals, but I do like to have some around me. But um, yeah, they're, they're very much a hobby, really. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 right, so you were talking right. about alpaca's feet. Yes, yes, I've got to trim the alpaca's feet so fairly soon. And one of them is a, is a spit monster. So luckily Paul can have that end. <laughs> so what do you do when you trim their feet? When you trim their feet, um, they have a strange foot. It's like a sort of toenail going over the top. And then underneath is a pad, like a dog pad. Right. And it's the toenail bit that you keep it trimmed because it, it gets too long. And some curl of them, up and it, it, it curls like, up, it no. can get too long. It can curl in and go into the pad if you let it get really mm. long. And the trouble with this very wet weather is they're not walking on anything hard regularly enough to keep it naturally okay. trimmed where they are naturally the rocky. Yes, yes, exactly the same. Uh, but sheep, sheep, um, <laughs> sheep don't have the pad underneath though. Right. But one of them seems to have a wonky foot that does grow a little bit faster than the others. But he's the one that's a spit monster. A wonky and foot? Anything, yes. <laughs> So that should be interesting. The last time I did anything with him was to give him a, a drench for fluke. And as soon as he got it in, he spat it straight out. Nice. So I did it a couple of times. I think in the end the alpaca got some, but I'm officially free of liver fluke. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Which is where I get a lot of the... People say, where do you get the ideas for your Sorry. cartoons? <laughs> Usually most of it has happened to me. Oh, grim. <laughs> One of the vet cards was uh, balancing up onto a stool trying mm. to get a drench down a horse yep. and the guy is all drenched well I've been there <laughs> trying to worm a oh, horse I liked that one didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I think it was called drench for a reason but I used to have a big 16 hand grey and she would just put her head up higher and higher and higher and higher and then she'd be on tippy toes this is and a I'm seriously not... meaty horse it is it? a meaty <laughs> horse yes <laughs> and she had the same look and he's pinching the horse's mouth to keep it closed, and I've often wondered whether to do it with the alpacas, because I can hear them clearing the throat when they're about to spit. <coughs> Stop it. <coughs> and Billy went <laughs> and swallowed. <laughs> but when they spit, it is really horrible. It's oh. the worst. It's the contents of the stomach. They spit, oh, so it's they, not like it's just a bit of saliva? No, no, they bring up the, dredge up the contents of the stomach, and it is really absolutely revolting. So regurgitated. Yeah. Yeah. They sometimes, when they've been spitting at each other, usually around the feed time, they it tastes so bad it makes their own mouths taste bad, and they have a little sour mouth, and they walk around going, because <laughs> 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 they made their own mouth taste. <laughs> but apart from that, they're a delight to keep. I'm not really selling them, am I? <laughs> Lovely animals, and we get a constant stream of people standing at the gate taking photographs of them. Oh. Or saying to us, "Are they llamas?" So I think I'm going to get them little T-shirts that say, "We're alpacas." You could get a notice on the gate. I could get a notice on the gate. Rather than a t-shirt. I've just got visions now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when rap artists first came out and they had those really chunky chains with a big... Yes. Uh, ...medallion <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm an alpaca. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, that's quite a kind of... I may shamelessly steal that. There's another do, place do I get. I get my ideas from other people as well, but they don't realise. <laughs> yes, they would have a medallion with a big A on it, couldn't they? Yeah. Hmm. One of the one of the uh, YouTube channels that I watch uh, has got sheep, and they've they've all got chain collars of that really really big yeah. plastic chain link stuff. Makes it an easy easy collar. You know, well, I'm assuming it's plastic, but it's plastic covered. Yeah, how strange. Right, this is a. Uh, Dan and Ashley at Grassfed at Homestead. Uh, have a look because their sheep have all got really, really good collars. <laughs> Just the background. Yeah, actually, the walls and the cobbles do take quite. It's repetitive, and there's a lot of layers. The way I paint with watercolor is I would have done the lighter color first and then gone over it with a slightly darker one. Yeah. And in a series of washes, the same with the horse's hmm. coat and then lift a little bit out. So I do paint in quite a fiddly way. I mean, I'm not, I try to make myself quicker sometimes, but then I'm always coming down to Who fine detail. Who taught you to paint? Um, Did you go to school to paint? Yes. Have you had a painting class? I <coughs> obviously did O-level art. I did A-level art. I had a terrific art teacher in A-level 
sadly now gone, who had spent a lot of time as a fine artist in Cornwall. He was quite mad, but he was brilliant because he was the real thing he'd painted and mm. and um, he knew what he was talking about. And he taught, he was really very, very good, especially with the oils. He taught to always put a little bit of the colour that's in the background of the sky needs to be everywhere, so he pulls it together. Oh, right. And I remember at one point in the A-level when he was discussing painting that it, it just clicked. And um, But then I did a one-year foundation course in art, but, but that was it. Because I didn't want to do it as a, as as a full-time a job. job. Yeah. I wanted to work with the real thing. In fact, at O-level, I specialised more in it. I went more for the sciences, because I still had this idea that it, I could be a vet, but I was hopeless at physics. Yeah. So I was never going to carry on. But um, <clears throat> after that, the, the painting, I've done occasional courses because it's nice to get out with other yeah. artists anyway because obviously I work alone with yes. dogs and chickens for <laughs> company. And um, it's really nice and you learn a lot from painting with other people. Um, I did a 12-week course a few years ago with a, a watercolourist in Malvern and she again was terrific. And she got me painting with much bigger brushes, uh, even that would get to a fine point. And that changed a lot. It opened up the way I could do the backgrounds a lot more. Right. Um, but a lot of it is I just read and you work as you go on. I've got the colours a lot brighter than I used to. I used to be quite afraid of colour. Yeah, they're and, great. Yeah, they? my very early cards are more subdued colour-wise and I've got brighter and brighter. And they certainly work better as cards anyway when they're nice bright colours. Yeah. But at first I was quite timid with it. But largely <laughs> my style hasn't changed at all. The one thing I do a lot though is I try and draw as much from life as I can, even though they're cartoons yeah. and, and the cows are talking and yeah. I think drawing from life informs the cartoons really well. And it's also good to keep your hand in, to keep practice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll oh, get out great. drawing the alpacas. Alpacas are really quite difficult. I spent a long well, time. They're not standing still very much. <laughs> only to spit at you. <laughs> no, they stand and stare. They stare at you. And they stare and they judge you. But they've got quite strange noses. They're, they're very cute and they've got huge eyes and eyelashes to die for. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they're quite odd. So I've done a lot of sketches of those and now I think I'm just about getting them. And then the trick is then to give them an expression. Yeah. And they will be appearing in cards fairly soon. Cool. Probably mm -hmm. with medallions because I just had this idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to credit you. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on record. <laughs> um, uh, Alison has invited us to uh, to go and visit her her small holding, and um, and I will be taking my camera to go and meet her alpacas. That would be great. I said it'd be nice if we get a little bit of dry weather, so they're actually the white one is white and not <laughs> not brown. <laughs> yeah, absolutely filthy at the moment, but but yes, that would be really nice. So you can meet Billy, Felix, Harry, and Achilles. Oh. <laughs> and the few chickens I've got, and Audrey the pet turkey, who's in her second year, so she survived two Christmases. But she thinks Are she's. Are they a... easy? Okay. I've found we've, them. We've said we're going to do turkeys yeah. this year. I started off with a pair, and she hatched out eight. Right. Which was, and she was great, absolutely. And they, we got them up to a certain age, and then realised that we didn't have a big enough undercover run. So I sold them prior to Christmas because it, it was getting to be an issue and I felt they were becoming overcrowded. They will panic and go upwards, I found, at any noise. Um, so you've got to have quite high fencing. Yeah. And they like to be on the cover because they roost as high as possible. Although Audrey the pet one goes into the coop with the chickens, but then she's just special. <laughs> but mostly they're a little bit hysterical. <laughs> right. And they're quite funny because if you make a noise, they all make it back. Right, yeah. And... We keep the animals in a field which borders on to our church graveyard. And somebody did comment that when they were laying flowers that it sounded like there was a cocktail party in the next field. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to try and imitate it, but it, <laughs> she, it was spot on. So they can be a bit noisy, but um, they're not too difficult. And they were all kept separate from the hens because of the, the, the health issues if they were yeah. the hens. Um, I don't know, we were very new to it, but we just we lost one, which just sickened and... Never really grew very big anyway. Yeah. The rest were absolutely fine. Brilliant. But the one we kept, the others always bullied her. So I ended up bringing her into a separate comp into the garden mm. where she followed me around and then, of course, she got a name and I only know what happens then. 
Not really. <laughs> a small holder <laughs> should do that, but she ended up with the chickens and she looked very glossy and healthy and she's kept we keep her because from May till about September, October she lays eggs. And the eggs are Are they are they the, the same size as chickens? Bigger, smaller? No, they're bigger. They're um about twice the size, they're about that large. Wow. But the yolk is very, very big, but it still tastes like a hen's egg, or at least hers do. Oh. So they're terrific for baking with. Um, they've just got quite hard shells, but she lays every other day fairly consistently throughout the whole summer. So for that reason, and she keeps a good lookout for the chickens as she thinks she is just a big hen. Oh, nice. So... We should definitely need turkeys, don't we? Hmm. Yes, I think so. I think we should keep them. <laughs> but don't name them. <laughs> the other unnamed one went early, but, but she's not. And she was supposed to perch quite high up, which is why we built her a very special perch of her own outside of the chicken house with a covered area mm. so she's not drafty. So, of course, she goes in with the chickens and ignores what we built her. Of course, but that's, that's what birds that's do. That's what birds it? do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the only thing is one of the alpacas is a bit naughty and he's fascinated with Audrey the turkey. And if she, they're allowed to be sort of scratching around out with the alpacas mm. if we're cleaning them. He chases her around, and she doesn't like that. She gets very... Turkey's, turkey's running away from a packet. That's, that is really funny. <laughs> oh, please let them do it when we come up. <laughs> yes. She, she waddles. She's quite, a, she's quite a big bird. funny birds, aren't they? She was quite... Not very well feathered when we got her, but now she's sleek and black. Nice. Um, yeah, she, that's what she does. She's quite small. She's very heavy, so picked her up and had to move her when she was perching where she shouldn't be. The only time she was a little bit problem last year was in spring because she started looking for a man and I found out my horror that she could actually walk a fair way up the chain link fence and a neighbour came down and they didn't know said did you know your turkey's in the graveyard? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go and retrieve her. <laughs> I didn't think it would go down too well if somebody found the turkey sitting on their memorial <laughs> among the flowers. Whoops. Luckily she was easy to catch and she was very sorry about that and she's not been allowed out in the spring again. But she was on a mission. But mm. I don't know where she thought she was going. Oh, yes, <laughs> Thank you, Alison. It's been absolutely... It's been brilliant for you to talk about your artwork, talk a bit about the alpacas. No, Thank you. Thanks for the chance. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoy all the cards. <laughs>